Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I don't entirely know how to uh, how to uh, describe a novel in six minutes, so um, I'll tell you a little bit about how it came about. Uh, I the previous novel, The Zero, was a dark satire about uh, our reaction to the terrorist attacks in New York. Uh, and after it was published, I've got a lot of readers who liked it very much, but it's it's a bit of a difficult read. And I got a call from a woman one day saying, um, I'm 86 and I'm in a book club and I'm reading your book, The Zero, and I have to tell you, I don't understand a word of it. Uh, and I said, well, um, it, it's a little bit of a difficult book. It's sort of Kafkaesque and it kind of moves away from, uh, um, from comprehension because I felt we um, sort of had a, a, an almost post-traumatic collective break from reality after the terrorist attacks. And she said, yes, I didn't get a word of that either. Uh, she said, but I have a theory. I think your book is about 7-Eleven. And I paused for a moment and I said, do you mean 9-11? And she said, what did I say? And I said, you said 7-Eleven, which is a convenience store. And she said, oh, right, 9-11. Uh, and uh, then she nicely asked, uh, and which of your books would I like? Um, so I, I steered her to one of my other books. But when I hung up the phone, I had this deep desire to write a book about 7-Eleven. Um, and so I wrote uh, The Financial Lives of the Poets, which is about um, a financial journalist who leaves his job to start a poetry website, which predictably fails. Um, and then he ends up uh, going to a 7-Eleven one night and having his life sort of unravel. That's the basic plot. Um, when my friends, my poet friends heard it was called The Financial Lives of the Poets, they said, that is going to be one short book. Um, <laughs> but it, I did manage to squeeze 300 pages out. I think it's my most comic novel, um, mostly because of the voice of the narrator, Matt Pryor. Uh, the other brilliant thing I did was I made Matt a bad poet, uh, which made freed me up from having to write above my abilities. Um, so I'm just going to read one of Matt's poems, um, and they're, they're sprinkled throughout the novel, although don't be scared off by it. There's, um, it's about 97% prose and 3% um, very prose-like poetry. Uh, this poem, uh, and like many of them, they, come up, he, they, they start in one place and end somewhere else. This one is called A Brief Political Manifesto. I was driving around the packed Costco parking lot looking for a space and listening to some guy on NPR talk about America's growing suburban poor when I saw this woman with four kids, little stepladders, two, four, six, eight, waiting to climb in the car while mom loaded a cask of peanut butter and pallets of swimsuits into the back of this all-wheel drive vehicle. And the kids were so cute that I waved. And that's when I saw the most amazing thing as the woman bent over to pick up a barrel of grape juice. Her low-rise pants rose low, and right there in the small of her back stretched a single strained th string, a thin strap of fabric, yes, the devil's floss, I kid you not, a thong, I swear to God, a thong. Now me, I'm okay with the thong, politically and aesthetically, I'm fine with it being up there, or out there, or wherever it happens to be. My only question is when did mom start wearing them? I remember my mom's underwear. Laundry was one of our chores. We folded those things awkwardly like fitted sheets. We snapped them like tablecloths, thwap. My sister stood on one end, me on the other, and we walked toward each other, twice. <laughs> we folded those things like big American flags, hats off and respectful, careful not to let them brush the ground. Now I know there are people out there who constantly fret about the fabric of America, violent videos, nasty TV, that sort of thing. But it seems to me the fabric of America would be just fine if there's a little bit more of it in our mother's underpants. <laughs> and that's the issue I will run on when I eventually run, getting our moms out of thongs and back into hammocks with leg holes the way God intended. Thank you.